Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie Caitlin and my channel name is The Stylish Med. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel and join the family. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back again. Today, I have a beautiful guest with me on my channel. She'll introduce herself. I'm Demo Dinoti. I'm doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm Dr. Demo Dinoti. I'm a medical officer in Nyangabwe Hospital, Botswana, um, currently. <laughs> and you studied in Russia? Yes, I studied in Russia, Tambov State Medical University. Okay, so the purpose of this video today is basically to highlight the differences between studying in China and studying in Russia. I feel like a lot of people these days choose these two countries as their options to go and study medicine abroad. And so I figured why not bring someone who studied in Russia and someone studied in China, me, <laughs> and talk about our experiences yeah. and just basically talk about the differences between studying there and there. We'll start with like some basic information, like the, the degree program, the years and all that kind of stuff. So what's the, the degree that you get when you study in Russia? Medical doctor. MD. So, so it's MD. Oh, is yes. it? Yeah. Why did I think it was MBBS? I don't know. <laughs> in Ukraine it's MBBS, isn't it? Or is it? Do you know? Sure. I don't know. But oh, and it's MD. Is it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Because I always see like people calling themselves MD and I'm like, but no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely MD. Okay, yes. I didn't know. All right, okay, no. So in China, the degree that you get is MBBS. So those of you that don't know, I spent about a year in Ukraine before I finally moved to China. And in Ukraine, I was on the Russian side of Ukraine. So there might be some little inputs here and there from my experience in, China, in Ukraine as well. But we'll just, you know, mostly talk about Russia and China. And how long is the program and how is it? Six years. Six years. Yes. Is it like a full six years? Yes. Or like it's us? a full six mm -hmm. years, but then you, uh, some people get to do one year of the language course, so that will be like seven years. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so then. depending on which medium uh -huh. you take, um, it'll be six years or seven years. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay, so in China, what happens is it's six years if you're studying in English. Mm -hmm. But those six years, it's five years of school, like strip school, and then one year of internship. They call it an internship, oh, yeah. but outside China, it's mostly like doing electives or like a clerkship or something, because mm -hmm. outside China, that's not considered to be um, an internship. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't study in English, you study in Chinese, and that's a five-year program okay. and no internship. After five years, you have your degree, and then you go and oh, wow. continue specializing, because in China, you can't work as a doctor just after that. True. Even in years. Russia, actually, really? we don't have medical offices there. So yes. you go straight into, into residency. residency. Uh -huh. yes. okay. okay. While you're doing your internship, mm -hmm. you're already um, working towards being whatever it is yes. that you're going to be. Okay. Um, so you already said that um, the teaching language is English. Does that apply to everyone? No. Or? No, okay. actually. So um, you choose for yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, the option of uh, learning in Russian, mm -hmm. and then there's an option of learning in English. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, in our school, there was the, another option of learning in French. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And do people take that option? Yes, actually, a lot of people. Especially from Cameroon, Gabon, ah, okay. Congo, okay. and then um, Tunisia. Yes. But how is, is the quality of teaching the same as those in English and in, in Russian? Yes, the, the ones in English and French, mm -hmm. the quality is the same. Mm -hmm. But obviously with the Russian language, you get more Because of your language. language. Yes. And, okay. And this brings me to my next point. Um, in the hospital, okay, first of all, did you have experience and like time to rotate mm -hmm. in hospitals there or was it mostly like just theory Very classes? minimal. Very minimal. Like, Very minimal. How often? Well, there were some some um, subjects where mm -hmm. you go to the hospital, mm -hmm. and then sometimes the lecturer takes you into a room and just and teaches then teaches something. Them, but then at the and then there were some lecturers who take you out, see the patients, and well, it depends. It depends on where you went, which hospital you mm -hmm. went to, because we we, uh, we rotated in many hospitals, oh, okay. like even in my town. Mm -hmm. We'd go to the Glavni hospital, we'd go to the other hospital, and then even nearby villages, mm -hmm. we'd go that side. 
So it depends on the hospital, it depends on the lecturer, so yeah. So is it like, does, does the university itself have an affiliated hospital or they no. just send you wherever? No. Oh, okay. But you have this, the state university mm -hmm. and then you have all the hospitals. So the, all, all the hospitals in mm -hmm. the state, mm -hmm. you can go and run there. Look, I guess that's different to us in China because we had the teaching hospitals, the teaching hospitals like affiliated mm -hmm. to the university, but then they also had other hospitals which they used to work with sometimes and mm -hmm. the But it was never like any random hospital; it was like a fixed one. Yeah, yeah. And then in terms of going to um, hospital classes and all that, just like you guys. Uh, but I do think we get a little more exposure in terms of going to the hospital, especially the fact that the last year is just in the hospital, you're not supposed to be in class or anything. But the classes that we used to go to the hospital, sometimes we're just in the room as well, yes, being yes. taught at the hospital mm -hmm. instead of seeing actual patients. And then sometimes we're actually seeing patients and it also just always depended on the teacher yes. and how willing he was to like, you know, mm -hmm. Also, it also depended on the student in mm -hmm. Russia because there were some people who were very eager to learn the language mm -hmm. even if they're not learning in Russian. Uh -huh. So if you know the language, you can easily tell your lecturer, oh, can I shadow you when yeah. you're on call or can I go with you oh, okay. to do runs? Mm -hmm. So that made it easier for you to, oh, okay. to get some practice. I guess that's the same as us because even like no matter how much you want to go and see a patient, the patients, yes, you're being taught in English, but your patients are Chinese, right? And chances are they don't speak English. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to mm -hmm. communicate with them and talk to them, you yeah. need to be able to speak yeah. some Chinese. Yeah. And not just like some Chinese, some <laughs> medical Chinese. Yes. You know the huge <laughs> difference between medical and, and language and, and language street language. Because yes. 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 you can go buy stuff in shops, you can mm -hmm. go, you know, you, you can, can move around. Taxi. But can you ask the patient how they fall, where they fall, what time they fall, because what I home, what they imagine, fall? Like sometimes I even imagine um, in my own language. Mm. I can't speak medical Me, terms. Me too. Sort of, I'm not very fluent in this sort of. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so what are like the fees like roughly? Oh, okay. Um, you know with Russia, Russia is a big, big country. Mm -hmm. So um, there are many cities, mm -hmm. many towns, so many universities in almost every town and every city. So it varies. Mm -hmm. But I think the cheapest would go for around $3,000 per year. Mm -hmm. And then the most expensive would probably go for $10,000 a year. Oh, so that's the same basically yes. in, in China as well. And it just depends on where the university is mm -hmm. and the quality of teaching and everything. Is, would you say the quality of teaching is the same like, around yeah, Russia. Russia? No, I, I wouldn't say that. Does the because fees reflect the difference or the fees no. are unrelated to the quality <laughs> the, of teaching? Their fees are not related. Okay. Their fees are only related to where in Russia you're going oh, to. Oh, okay. Yes. Can you explain the state thing? Because I remember when I was applying to go to Russia and Ukraine, there was this state university, this state university, and then there's others that aren't state universities, like what's, is there a difference or is... Well, not really, but there are many state universities, mm -hmm. and then there are some universities that are not, that are part state, part um, private. Mm -hmm. So, those ones are usually more expensive, uh -huh, and expensive. then, like the, well, any like any other private yeah. school, yeah. essentially. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, intakes. When is the intake? Oh, okay. Um, in our school, it's only in September. Mm -hmm. Yes. September first is the beginning of the first semester, and then the the first semester ends in January. Mm -hmm. Then February we start the next semester, mm -hmm. which ends in June. So it's also two semesters. With May. Yes. Okay. So two semesters, and then you have your your summer break. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's so like that's in China. We have two intakes, but for medicine, um, they mostly some universities will take you in the February mm -hmm. intake, but it's mostly actually the even us, one. Uh, some universities will have you. February uh -huh. intake. Okay. But only some of them. Mm -hmm. And then I <laughs> was late. I arrived in December. Mm -hmm. And when I arrived, and I'm always saying this story, it's very, it's very late. When I arrived, the exam timetable was out, and I had to get. They were like, you either write exams or you're going to join next semester or next oh, year. Wow. 
<laughs> because my uni didn't have a next semester it was either now or next year and the thing is they don't tell you these things like agents do not tell you true, these things you get there then you find this out for yourself which brings me to my next question mm -hmm. how to apply do you use agents do you apply yourself do you recommend agents and not not well, I think with it, with Russia, mm -hmm. it's better with an agent mm -hmm. because when you're going there for the first time, mm -hmm. you don't know the language, you, you don't know anything. anything, you don't know the states or mm -hmm. anything like that. So using an agent helps you to kind of visualize where you're going mm -hmm. and what's there. So I used an agent called Rakus. Studying medicine. That is Studying the biggest one. I didn't even know it. I yes. think they, they have like they have a little setup in most countries in Africa. In most, don't they? Yes, in mm -hmm. most countries, mostly in Africa and a few countries um, in Asia. Okay. Yes. Correct. Um, oh, with China, like I'm always torn between this. What always asking me, should I use an agent to apply? How mm -hmm. do I apply? And all that. And I'm always, I use an agent, right? If I could go back and not use an agent, I would. Oh. I would apply myself because the application process is really easy. Um, yes, like in China, you won't know anyone, you won't be able to speak the language, but you will find someone who can speak some level of English to help you get to university. And that's what you need really to get to the university. And most universities actually organize pickups for you. Oh. Like once you arrive at the airport, there's someone waiting for you or there's a bus waiting for you. That's nice. And like for example, in my university, they used to do this thing where when they have admitted students, they make them all arrive like on the same day or like within the same week so that they organize transport for them to get to the school. And that so if you've sense. used an agent, your money is going for nothing. Like you <laughs> and most of these agents, like you tell them that I want to apply to this university. They don't even apply to that university for you. They apply to the easiest one. And then they'll just tell you, oh no, you didn't get accepted there, and then they send you wherever. Something like that happened to me. <laughs> That's oh that. my gosh. That happened to me as well. <laughs> and so this is why I'm saying, like, if you can, avoid agents. But if you can't, then I guess. Yeah. You know, with, with Russia, some, some universities actually don't allow private application. Really? Yes. They only take students who use that agent mm -hmm. or those agents. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the chances of being able to work in Russia after uni? Well, it's actually easy to work there. Really? Pro uh, provided you've learned the language. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, okay. It's easier for you if you've learned the language. Because I've had a couple of friends stay mm -hmm. there and uh, one of them went into laparoscopic surgery. The other one went into cardiology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because in Russia, you can sub-specialize. Yeah. There's no... If you want to be a, like I said, laparoscopic surgeon... Mm, you can do that. Yeah, in Africa, you'll start doing surgery first, basic oh, surgery. Then, you're then like you go years. for another five years. So it'll take yeah. like a long time. That's but true. In, in, in Russia, you can just go straight into it. Yeah. So if you, if you know the language, then um, you take a certain exam. Mm -hmm. And then that exam... Is this exam in Russia? Yes. Okay. Then it qualifies you to to practice in Russia. Mm -hmm. For well, that's that's the exam you take for the license mm -hmm. to study in Russia. Okay. Because our exam is just the state exam. Yeah, yeah. And then if you want to go home, you okay. can go home, and then you get your license at home. But if you're going to stay in Russia, yeah. then you have to take that exam, and then you can start the residency program. Okay. And with the students who did exceptionally well, mm -hmm. the school would actually ask you to stay. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And then sometimes they'll pay for you. Oh, that's the same in China, mm -hmm. actually. Um, after you've done your six years and then you've chosen what specialty you want to go into, you do that. And then if you want to continue there and work in that specialty, you have to do the exam mm -hmm. also in Chinese and do that. I think I only know like two people from my school that have done this. I'm not really familiar with. A lot of people ask me if you can stay at work after you specialize. You can as long as you're yes. willing to do the exam and learn the language because there's no way guys. This, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say yes you can and not tell you that you have mm -hmm. to know the language. It's You can get through the first six years of school yes, with like with bare knowing, minimum yes, language. True. But after here yeah, you have to be in the hospital and it's going to be very difficult for you to do your job if you don't speak the language of the people that you're you know, trying to treat. But then obviously we have the main determining factor. <laughs> Why people leave. <laughs> yeah. So most people don't stay behind because as a foreigner working in Russia, it's, 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 you don't get paid much. 
So when they actually they play you differently? No, they play you the same, but as a foreigner, <laughs> it's too little for you. Oh, <laughs> true, yes, true, true. Because um, there, as a Russian, yes, it's fine. You get paid your three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, whatever. Um, but you have other incentives. Mm. If you're going to have a child, the state gives you some money to take care of your child. They give you money to buy a house, that kind of thing. But if I am going to have a child in it's Russia you. and I'm getting three hundred dollars, and already How the lifestyle you you're living exactly. is different from the lifestyle you're living. So, the so that's a very good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even considered that as well. Yeah. Yes. That's so it's, uh, for for the Russians, it's fine because this is the way they live and they have other incentives from the government. Mm -hmm. But if you are a foreigner, you get to struggle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle becomes real. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, especially those people that like nice things. You have to get all those. Like us. <laughs> Yeah, so what is the accommodation like? Um, okay, so my first year mm -hmm. I went, I don't know, I, I would say that I'm lucky because mm -hmm. I went into a very new hostel. Okay. Like that hostel was being opened that September oh, and I came nice. in November. Okay. So everything was clean and, and nice. nice. Now the thing is, you get there and there are people from all over the world. Uh -huh. You have, and all these people have that different personality. Mm -hmm. And oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> some people are very, very, very clumsy. Yeah, and and some people are dirty. Yes, and some people are clean. Yes, but most people are dirty. I know <laughs> a lot of people, and especially with communal stuff. Yeah, people just oh, it was one of those where you have communal showers done yes. or something. Oh my god, wait, was, no, it communal, it, was communal as in like there's the one downstairs or there's like on every floor? On every floor. Oh, okay. On every floor, there was a bathroom. There was a kitchen. So we mm -hmm. shared that. There was a female's kitchen, uh, bathroom, female, uh, and then the male bathroom, mm -hmm. and then the laundry room, mm -hmm. and then the kitchen, and then a library. And was it compulsory to stay on camp, like in the in the dorms? No, it wasn't compulsory. But when you knew, mm -hmm. that's yeah. all you know. So yeah. it felt like. But there wasn't like a restriction to, to say you know you have to stay for two years no, first, and then no, okay. no restrictions at all. So the first few years, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was still clean and <laughs> Then it got more people it came, got too dirty. Okay, so okay. um, afterwards I got an apartment mm -hmm. and getting an apartment in Russia is very easy mm -hmm. and very affordable. Like how much roughly was your rent per per month? I um, think around one thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, okay. Around one thousand three hundred dollars. $130. I was trying to convert it to so many different currencies now. I know. Okay. I'm also trying to convert. Okay. I think, yes. Maybe like $100, $120. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's okay. Let me try this. Okay, fine. So for. In China, wait. Wait, wait. Okay, fine. In Ukraine, it was kind of the same thing, but. The hostels there are like a lot older. Mm -hmm. Maybe some universities have like newer yes. hostels and stuff, but the hostels were a lot older and they were kind of far from like the main campus. And the hostels weren't. I don't understand this. Is it the same in Russia? Like it was there was the school right, and then around the school, but like roads down. That's where the hostels are. And then you have to walk to school. Or were the hostels actually in the same like no. vicinity as the campus? So our school was there, and, and your hostel was. And our <laughs> hostel was there, and then the other hostel was there, and then that's the other hostel was there. That's the same and thing. And then the hostels were also all like around the. City. I never understood this. This is the same <laughs> thing in Ukraine, but in China it's different. Like the hostels are on campus, so if mm. this is. You know, campus, the hostel is inside the same oh, wall. Okay. The campus might be huge, like my campus was very big, but the hostels are all on campus. Um, and then the accommodation fees were about 4,500 RMB. I will leave conversions <laughs> on the screen somewhere. For the hostel. For the hostel. Okay. And then for the first, in my university, for the first two years, I think. This was a new rule that they brought, but initially we weren't allowed to live off campus at all, mm -hmm. um, and you had to stay on campus, and you had to, you could choose which dormitory you could you could stay in. Um, they had dormitories for like only for international students, mm -hmm. and then for the Chinese students, and they were totally different. 
So for the international students, you have your own bathroom and, mm -hmm. and toilet and all that, and then you share a kitchen. Everyone. Yeah. Oh, so in wow. your room, you have your bathroom and your so toilet. Nice. Yeah, I really, this is something I really appreciate because in other countries who are suffering, they have communal, like we don't even have communal bathrooms at all. Mm -hmm. Well, and then so after my, I moved out, my well, third year or fourth year, I moved out and I started staying on campus and my accommodation was around, how much was I paying again? <laughs> <laughs> I was paying, your lord, I don't remember. I honestly, you know what, I want to look back, but I did a video on this, you guys, so you guys can just go and check yeah. this video over there. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave the, and I want to go and check, I don't want to lie to you guys, so I'll leave everything on the screen in the description box and at the end of the video. But it was also very affordable and very mm -hmm. easy to find. And the only thing was like, living in a Chinese community is very, <laughs> very different from yes. living you know, amongst international students who are black mm -hmm. back home because their way of life is very different. So I guess mm -hmm. it's also that. Mm -hmm. What were the fees in terms of, for example, in China, you had to pay your accommodation fees if you're staying on campus, then your insurance, um, and then you had to do your residence permit, but you paid that to the immigration people, and then also obviously your tuition fees. Were there any other fees that you guys had to pay? No, only living expenses, which mm -hmm. you would well, That's your own yes. thing. Okay. So I already asked you, did, did you get the language, you really spoken enough, like a lot about the language, but did you have to learn it? Was it a must? Like did you guys have language as a subject? Yes, we had them in we had classes in Russian, first year and second year, mm -hmm. Russian classes. So it was like but once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. Just to learn the basics. Okay. Essentially. But were you quizzed on it? Yes. And was it part of like your transcript at the end? It was. Okay. It was. So that's the same. But it wasn't that hard. Of course, basic, basic, <laughs> you know, basic languages. I mean, let me not say of course because some people do struggle with languages. But I'm yeah. a, I love. I languages. struggle with languages. <laughs> I struggle oh, a lot. But I for some reason, um, my parents came for my mm -hmm. graduation mm -hmm. and they thought I was very fluent. <laughs> they were so impressed because, because you're busy ordering food, yes, buying and stuff at shops. <laughs> So they thought, oh my gosh, our daughter knows the language. Oh, my and I was telling them, this is the bare minimum. I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. Ask me anything else yeah. and I get stuck. No. <laughs> For us, I feel like by the time you leave China, you've definitely learned some amount mm -hmm. of, of Chinese. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can survive in China if you don't learn. And mm -hmm. most of the people that are miserable in China are people that don't speak the language. Speak. And yes. most of the people that are doing really well and enjoy trying to all that speak the language really well and so did you have to like do a proficiency exam or anything of that sort before your graduation or anything where well, it was just those after the those two years exam. no like the language exam oh, there was, there was, was no like, like proficiency exam for no. the language oh, okay for us um most Only the people who study, study in russian but oh, okay. us who studied in english and french mm -hmm. wasn't necessary no, for us, um, most universities, they have this thing where before you graduate, you have to have passed uh, a Chinese proficiency exam, they call it HSK, and you have to pass a certain level, so there are six levels, most universities say like level yeah. four, <laughs> you have to pass that, otherwise at the end you don't get your degree, you just get like a certificate of completion, uh -huh. but you don't get your degree, but some universities don't have this. Mm -hmm. um yeah but it's necessary <laughs> that's the thing and a lot of people will argue this and say no i didn't come here to learn language i came here to learn thing. and this is the unfortunate thing that i was saying like agents will just send you somewhere mm -hmm. and they don't tell you this mm -hmm. you find out when you really when get you're there, already there yeah. and by then there's nothing you can do i think do a lot of things you just find it find out when yeah. you're there because <laughs> they tell us nothing <laughs> yeah they tell us this very... language thing is a big thing because especially in my university they don't play if you don't have that chinese exam done your degree is just on hold until further notice. Wow. Until you're ready also <laughs> <laughs> to do the language exam. Um, scholarships, a lot of people ask about scholarships. Mm -hmm. Can you get a scholarship to Russia and how? Yes, actually, I think maybe half of the students mm -hmm. who were from Botswana mm -hmm. were on scholarships. Mm -hmm. And it was it was um, an agreement between our government and the Russian government. Oh, so so you can those. apply for it at the Russian embassy mm -hmm. somewhere actually. Oh, okay. Yes. And were there were there other you know like other countries what am I saying? Were the students of other countries with the same type of like agreement with their countries and I Russia? I barely or? saw anyone with mm -hmm. unless if it was private companies that mm -hmm. had sent them okay. there. But 
it was mostly us <laughs> and did you guys have this thing where at the end of every year they like evaluate the students that have done well and then they award them like with a scholarship or something no not in my school <laughs> maybe in other universities mm -hmm. i'm not sure but mm -hmm. not in our university like i said only after you've graduated mm -hmm. then they can tell you oh okay, post grad you. we can sponsor you okay. you can stay behind but uh -huh. while you're doing your your pre, your undergrad there's nothing there's nothing Nah, China is definitely the land of scholarships. I feel like every other person is there on some kind of a scholarship. Like when it when it comes to like the especially with the African and Chinese cooperation thing that they have going on right now, China is giving lots of funding to African countries and lots of students are going there on scholarship. But this is mostly for masters. And then unfortunately for medicine, there's very, very, very few people that are on scholarship doing medicine undergrad. And the ones mostly they'll, they'll tell you that if you want the scholarship, you have to do medicine in Chinese. Oh, yes. So you find that most of the students doing medicine in Chinese are on scholarship. And then if you want it for English, it's really hard to get. I don't know anyone who's got it. Um, but they do, like at the end of every academic year, they evaluate and see who did well. And then they give you like there's a first class, a second class, and a third class, excellent scholarship. And then there's some other kinds of scholarships as well that they give for like participation in things mm. and you're also doing well in school. That's really so nice. I there's lots of chances to make money in China <laughs> if you're willing to work. <laughs> if you're willing to work. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think that's everything in terms of like school. Okay. So now like just like general stuff that people generally don't ask before they go but things that they actually need to ask. Mm -hmm. Racism. <laughs> well... <laughs> I guess, you know what I think? I think racism is everywhere. True. I think racism is everywhere and in Russia, I think it had a lot to deal with, to do with um, ignorance because many people only watch Russian media and mm -hmm. they're not exposed to anything mm -hmm. outside that. I think this is one thing that China and Russia have in common in terms of racism. Like, it's, I felt like it wasn't racism. I mean, obviously I did experience like yes, direct, yes. like this is proper racism. Mm -hmm. But most of what I experienced was just ignorance. Mm -hmm. People not knowing that black people exist. Yes. Like, it sounds strange. But it, it was so it, crazy. It, like, you see it, someone it and say, oh, wh wh how did you get to have this kind yeah. of skin? People ask how you, long, did you burn? No, they say, how long did you stay under the sun uh, to get this like skin that. color? Yeah, Touching your hair. Yeah. Stuff oh like gosh. that, like people asking you, so how did you get here? Because they <laughs> honestly really don't know. And initially, it's very annoying. But like the more people ask you, like, wow, these people really don't know. Like, I used to ignore a lot of that because me I'm too. just like, I'm here to get my degree, and then and I'm leaving. It. I'm it. not here for you, so I'm not going to let you interrupt this. Me too. And I was barely in a position to be able to experience mm -hmm. it, if I can mm -hmm. say. Like, me too. Yeah. And people tend to ask me as well, did you experience more racism in Ukraine or China? Which one do you think is more? I feel like it's an unfair question because I spent six years or five years in China, in China. and only a year a in year, Ukraine. Yes. So obviously I've had more opportunities mm -hmm. to experience <laughs> opportunities <laughs> 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 in China than yeah. in Ukraine. What was the weather like? Oh my gosh. Oh my I gosh. Miss Russia I miss Russia. <laughs> you know, um, I remember when I was leaving here, uh -huh. I'm afraid of the cold. You can mm -hmm. see that I'm dressed up for the weather. <laughs> so my friends were like, how are you going to survive? Mm -hmm. They say in Russia, it's very, very cold. And for some reason, I didn't really think about it that mm -hmm. much. And I was just going. And I got there in November. So winter was that Yeah. Same. Was getting cold. When I arrived in, in Moscow, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what did I get myself And into? it was yet to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly enjoyed Russian weather. I enjoyed it. Love it. it. And love I it, think love it, love the, it. the thing that made me enjoy it the most is that it's only cold outside. And then yes. indoors, indoors you're fine. It's it's warm. Okay, after like five minutes, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's like central heating, the heaters on the walls. So uh, at uh, a specific time of the year, mm -hmm. they switch Just, on yeah. all those heaters, and then in, oh yeah, <laughs> Russian weather. Oh my gosh. So Russian weather is extreme. It's extreme. 
the minus 40s and the 40s. And the 40s. <laughs> in summer, I definitely don't miss the really, 40s. I know. But I miss the minus 40s. Yes. In summer, it gets really, really, really hot. Like hotter than Africa. No. <laughs> I never understood this. Like, till now, I'm just like, how? But anyway. Yeah. But I love the winter. I enjoy the winter. And the winter is longer. It's from around October, November time, mm -hmm. all the way until April. If there's anything I miss about Ukraine and that side of the world, it's definitely the weather. Like, I, I miss, miss it too. I miss it miss, too. miss, 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 miss it. I mean, China is cold, but it doesn't get as cold, cold as much. I mean, unless you're in the north of China, but very few people go to the north of China for school. So there you'd experience the same weather mm -hmm. as Russia, because obviously they next to each other. But I definitely miss the weather. I loved, I feel like I was meant to be like, me I don't too. know the snowman or something I, because I, I love, love, love cold oh, weather. I don't deserve this African winter. <laughs> I don't. And the white Christmas. Yes. Ooh. And snow pictures. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. Um. Okay. So cost of living. Like, was it expensive living in Russia, or was it just on like roughly on a like yeah. on a month? How it much depends. did you spend it on depends and what on did who you spend <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it depends on who you are because okay. <laughs> I okay I for me I lived on an average of two hundred dollars mm -hmm. and I was comfortable mm -hmm. very very comfortable mm -hmm. I would spoil myself once in a while I had this is what I used to do I used to divide my money into three a third was for the bills for like the phone and Where's yes person? and then a, a, a third of it was for the food yes okay bills and like transport yeah, was yeah, also yeah. There. Mm -hmm. and then a third was for the food mm -hmm. and then a third was like spoiled <laughs> <laughs> spoiled that's the same and as imagine this is 200 dollars this was enough <laughs> me too i feel like 200 was actually probably a lot mm -hmm. for me because china is obviously a lot cheaper to live in yeah. but again it depends on you if you're shopping mm -hmm. online and if you're shopping in zara two different budgets True. so obviously like once in a while i would go to like the zara's you guys saw my home my hauls and all those i used to go to that, like it. once in a while <laughs> once, like but that was once in a while but if i wasn't doing that i could definitely like buy anything that i want like comfortably and but i also had friends who got around a thousand dollars eight hundred dollars but we no. still struggle how <laughs> 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 Oh so, my god. As I, I as I was saying, like it depends on who you are. That's true. Okay, no, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. No, but living in China definitely is very, very affordable. If you're like on a tight budget, mm -hmm. you'll definitely be okay. Food is cheap, transport is very cheap. Um, I used to be able to take an Uber to class every day if I wanted to, but I didn't, obviously, because mm -hmm. we're saving money for clothes. Of course. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, that's how affordable it is. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the food like? Did you struggle getting used to the food? Um, what kind of food do they have there? I find this question very awkward because I feel like there's the same kind of food everywhere. You just make your food differently and yes. they make it differently. Yes. The thing with Russia is that, um, okay, because I lived in a hostel mm -hmm. and we cooked for ourselves, mm -hmm. you could you cook fine. for yourself so, anything. Yeah. So what I used to do was that I used to go with spices mm -hmm. from here. Me too. Like I used to take my <laughs> Robinsons, Robinsons, my Maggie, my yes. Robinsons, my Knorr's, everything. And then what else did I take? Okay, our like dried bean leaves, mm -hmm. like things I'd miss from here. Um, Biltong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the things I used to pack. Me too. Like just to spice up my meals. But it wasn't um, like because I need because I couldn't yes, find yes. food or anything there. So and then you find your everyday food. Your rice, your... Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of buying what you want yes. and making it yourself. So food is the same everywhere. It just depends on what you like. And I think maybe the thing you guys should be asking is, can you find what you want like everywhere? And what shops do they have? Um, I remember in China, we had an ocean. I think you guys were in Ashan or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had... There was Walmart, there was really? Tesco, yeah. Oh my gosh! There was, there was a lot. <laughs> Wow. There was a lot, and depending on the city you're in, you have even more options. And my favorite, favorite, favorite was Metro. I don't know if you guys had Metro, 
it's, no, it's a German shop. No. But they have like international products galore. It's just um, a little more costly. But even in the Chinese Chinese shops, you'll still find potatoes. It's because a potato here, it's a mm -hmm. potato in China, mm -hmm. it's a potato in Russia, it's yes. <laughs> everywhere. And, That's um, and yeah, rice. Mm -hmm. You know, but our extracurricular is a big thing in Russia. Like, do people generally like do sport after school, go to clubs, eat, not clubs like nightclub, but like clubs as a like debate, what what? Well, public speaking, like, you know that thing like in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, I think, not much, mm -hmm. not much. I'm, but I, think um, <laughs> I do know some people who did sports, mm -hmm. and I think the people who did sports are actually the ones who. Really, like they were, went out there. She's so, talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Actually, I should have. <laughs> I was that doll. Like whatever events, whatever Sporting thing event. was there, I was there. Like I feel like this is one thing I'm really happy that I got to do each other because I got to travel. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these competitions that oh, they yeah. used to do took me around China. I literally, the only reason I went to Beijing and all these other things, so I used to do? do, I used to play tennis, I used to do ads, and then I used to dance, and oh, I used to do, nice. um, does this? How come you've not danced for us? Viewers, what are you saying? You guys, the same way I said you guys will never see a boyfriend tag on this channel. The same way you guys will never see me dancing on this we channel. Want it. It's highly requested. <laughs> yeah, like dancing especially and and public speaking, like speaking Chinese, that took me around China mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And all these were like paid trips, living in a hotel. Oh, yes. We had people Doing who nice. did that. Mm -hmm. I didn't, but because uh, my talent does not. <laughs> Couldn't take me places. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like this is the one thing I definitely like. If you're, you know, borderline between studying where and studying where, and you're considering China, China is the land of opportunities. Mm -hmm. If you want to start a business, you can do it mm -hmm. while you're studying in China. If you wanna, I don't know, start something for yourself, a brand, or whatever, you can do it while you're in China. If you want to travel that. and do competitions mm -hmm. and do, you know, just you'll discover that you're talented and think that don't even count as talents and they'll take you somewhere <laughs> in China. Like I really like that about China. Like we might say a lot about China, but that one that's one thing that I've mm -hmm. seen that I haven't seen like everywhere else. Yeah. But I think for me, I I truly like that system mm -hmm. where you're not be, just because you're studying medicine doesn't mean that you should just your, to your brain is just medicine, medicine, you go to class, come back, sleep, eat. We are well rounded yeah. people and you're not supposed you are not you shouldn't be fixed in a box you can we're not caged and mm -hmm. we we should be allowed to to explore other things and life outside yes. see who you are yes. apart from your medical degree i For really me, appreciate that okay yeah. i i say i have very little talents mm -hmm. but so when i was a student mm -hmm. obviously i wasn't doing those big big things mm -hmm. <laughs> but i still wasn't caged to just doing mm -hmm. medicine yeah i used to do people's hair and make some money you see the that's side. the thing yes and i also used to bake and sell i bake cakes i bake pies and i bake um, muffins mm -hmm. and sell around the hostel mm -hmm. and then when even when i went to my apartment people mm -hmm. would still text me like we want where are the muffins yeah you see where are the pies you can make extra money like when your parents aren't sending you money or something's going on back home because it's always guys six years is a long time some Thing is bound to happen yes and, and you will have something to rely mm -hmm. on and it doesn't take much because you <clears> just <throat> make the batter mm -hmm. put it in the oven while it's in the oven you are studying mm. and it doesn't take and it's always good to have that thing just mm -hmm. to you know that like hobby that can keep you you know Same. away <laughs> and just, you know it's true. okay um nightlife and fun well i'm, I'm not the best person <laughs> for this. And did all exist? my friends, all my friends mm -hmm. get shocked when I tell them now. And yeah. like, I've never been in a club in Russia. <laughs> okay, but I know, like, even I wasn't like the club person, but at least I know what it looks like inside the club. And I, I wanted to and go. It's very nice, I must say. <laughs> I wanted to go once, uh -huh. but I, I would never she get. She lived six years in the land of vodka <laughs> and whatever else Russia is famous for, I and you never went to a club once. Wow. But in, in Ukraine, but, I never but, went, and I, I kind of regret it because I, I don't know what it looks like inside. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but I had friends who went there, mm -hmm. and apparently it was really really nice. How can you imagine nightlife in Russia is? Because Russia are fun lovers. Yeah, they are fun I lovers and like carefree mm -hmm. people. So mm -hmm. 
they're not they're not the type of people who are very traditional or uh -huh. no okay. they are very wild people and and well it's a good thing mm -hmm. and a bad thing <laughs> the the nightlife is very fun mm -hmm. right and a lot of foreign students get trapped in that uh, that's the same thing in china yes. well, and drugs some and people day, some people end up stuff. not finishing school mm -hmm. because they were too they were too distracted by other things that were going on mm -hmm. because we, we say that you can do other things while you're in school in russia yeah. and in china mm -hmm. but you need to cautiously remind yourself of That's why true. you're there and remind yourself and it's very easy to, to get the quarter in this yes because some people would do more of the extracurricular activities than the, school. than the schooling and, and i feel like this is as nice as like i already said it's nice in china yeah but i feel like it's very easy also to get mm -hmm. caught up on the other mm -hmm. side and get carried away making your money running your businesses forgetting that mm -hmm. you are a student before you're a businesswoman so, <laughs> so the advice i would give for yeah. people who want to go there is that know why you're going there yeah. and stick to it like make the main thing the main thing mm -hmm. everything else comes, comes secondary under. to it yeah I agree. I yeah. couldn't have said it better. Mm -hmm. Did you feel confident when you came to work as a doctor straight out of a Russian university? Well, for me, mm -hmm. it's different because um, I came home every year. Mm -hmm. I came home for electives, so mm -hmm. I'd spend a month or two in Botswana Hospital. So I would say by the time I got to internship, mm -hmm. I was I was competent. I was mm -hmm. comfortable with the system because mm -hmm. I knew what you were to expect and yes. had factors. But what I would say is that medicine in any part of the world is different from any other part of the world. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to study medicine in the US and then you go and practice in Ghana, you're going to struggle. If you're going to study in Ghana, then you go and um, study in Ghana and then practice in China you are going to struggle majorly mm -hmm. because um, the systems are different and people in every hospital, in every um, country, they have different protocols and then there are also diseases that are prevalent in other oh, countries so more true. than other countries. In, in Russia, for example, we have, I think in my whole six years of studying there, I think I've seen a very few you, um, I've seen only a few cases of tuberculosis. Yeah, okay. but tuberculosis, yeah, <laughs> is our daily bread. <laughs> Every day, you know. And yeah. um, in my in the state that I studied in, mm -hmm. there were approximately two million people, mm -hmm. but there were a handful of HIV patients. Mm -hmm. In Botswana, in Botswana, it's something it's, yeah. most people live with. So you have there's that adjustment for the first few months you have to adjust to the system and to yeah. how things work in that area so it's not that you are less competent mm -hmm. or anything like that a system out of different experiences yes. so what i would advise people is that even if you're not able to go to the country where you're going to eventually practice you should um, stay up to date on what goes on in those areas um if you have people you know in universities there then you can ask them what are the common diseases there common illnesses and then you read up on them mm -hmm. and then at least when you get there the theory is is covered the theory part of it is covered then all you need to do is get to learn how to deal with it how to manage that is it. so true yes um, I definitely I like I like how you put that because a lot of people tend to just bash students that study in Russia, students that study in China, but they don't take into consideration the fact that what we studied might actually be different. For example, I don't want to suggest lying to you guys. We studied HIV as like eight not even like a chapter, it was like a yes, subtopic yes. of a subtopic and of a yeah, subtopic. There's a whole and book. yeah, there's books on it. So <laughs> covering it. It's one of those things. And then things that we studied there that we see every day there, here, never seen them. And so yeah, it's not like I don't know anything, mm -hmm. but I know something. It's just that what I know isn't, you know, going to be asked of me here. For example, I'm in the pediatrics department. I've never seen malnutrition in in Russia. <laughs> yeah, but here yeah, we see it all the time. Yeah. Because this is a 
a third world country mm. or that's a first world country you know mm -hmm. there's there's going yeah. to be differences yeah so i feel like this is very important especially to those people that might be discouraged or might feel some type of way about going to study um, in russia or china or anywhere else really but like you have to consider that there's more to it than just all oh, no, those students that study there yeah. um you guys have totally different curriculums mm -hmm. um you might be doing the same courses like we're both doing medicine we're both doing people we're both doing obstetrics but the cases and the topics that you see are different so thank you for that point yeah um and then find okay let me not say finally <laughs> advice to students in russia right now and students that want to go to russia well i think i i, I kind of mm -hmm. but like final words now okay. that you're a doctor <laughs> or, however many years you've been a doctor for and all that like looking back at your experience what would you have done differently okay i would say that to those who are contemplating going to a different country to go and study i'd say go for it mm -hmm. don't fear oh i'm going to this country i'm alone my parents are not there or stuff like that the world is literally one place facts right <laughs> now you there's no excuse because yeah. we you can still communicate with your parents don't fear mm -hmm. i would say that my my advice to those who want to go and study um go for it and you can do it if we could do it honestly, oh. <laughs> then you can do it <laughs> and then my advice when you get there is that work hard work hard because um if you're going to do medicine like us the type of doctor you become depends on the type of work you put in and say that again <laughs> say that. the type of doctor you become depends on the type of work you put in if you put in the work you will become as great as any doctor you, that you've been looking at and admiring so with medicine it it honestly it's honestly the hard work mm -hmm. because you don't even have to be the smartest person that is so true <laughs> sometimes the smartest people aren't the best of doctors i don't even feel like those are sometimes they i think that's <laughs> like most of the time because people tend to think that oh to do medicine you have to be smart but i i highly like i am against that i am so against that because it's not about being smart mm -hmm. it's about how much work you're willing to put yes. in and how much sacrifice you're willing you know to true. make and true. and all that true and the love for it obviously <laughs> guys if you don't and love medicine don't do it and don't do it in russia or china <laughs> yes i was going to say that another piece of advice if you are not into medicine if someone told you to do medicine and you you weren't for it don't do it do not <laughs> because i've seen people who are miserable because their parents told them to do medicine and worse still when you go to a place like china or russia or ukraine or like these countries that you know life isn't the way we're used to it's even worse mm. whereas if you you feel if you're forced going to medicine in canada or in the uk or in the us or whatever you know there's there's four bags there's yes. life yes. is is not that different but you are stuck sure. in russia and you're stuck doing a course mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. not loving you're not going to enjoy it you're that's you're going to be miserable that's true so do it out of love mm. and yes so work hard and do it out of love i think that's my advice mm -hmm. i think the rest will just fall into place yeah everyone will have but different you, experiences you yes everyone will have different experiences and have an open mind don't cage yourself don't don't think in one way mm -hmm. and uh, to be honest i think going abroad to study mm -hmm. is one of the most amazing cultural experiences honestly, honestly because you learn so much outside just what you went there to pursue you learn so much about people's cultures the world and you see places i think like you become more open minded true, honestly true so i would say go for it honestly yeah. I would I wouldn't change it for the world. Honestly, this brings me back to my my last question for you. Would you go back? I <laughs> would, would you repeat the same thing? <laughs> I would. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I would without like without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I would go back to Russia and I'd have probably an even better experience. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing for me that I regret is mm -hmm. not learning the language. Mm -hmm. And I regretted it much later on and I thought to myself, oh, it's too late." Because I think around 5th year that's uh -huh. when I realized, uh -huh. "Oh, Should I should not let this <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I would mm -hmm. definitely go back. 
same guys i don't want to lie to you. i mean i'm fresh out of med school like, <laughs> literally um but i already miss it i i mean i mean maybe it's because of the fact that i thought i would have a chance to go back and say my goodbyes mm -hmm. and go one last tour around china but corona didn't let that happen but still i would go back i wouldn't change my experience for anything the bad i experienced is not as you know it's not as it's not as much as the good that came out of it and it was a lovely experience honestly staying at home you can always be at home mm -hmm. but you only get <laughs> one shot to go and study abroad and True. i would take it whether that's russia that's china that's ukraine that's india wherever mm -hmm. it is i would take it and make whatever memories you can there anything else you want to add before i close off thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i really 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 enjoyed having you here on my channel. I feel like I should bring you back. And so I don't know what video we're gonna do again, but if you guys wanna see Tebo back on my channel, please leave a comment and let us know. And if you feel like she should have her own channel, do comment as well. My battery has died, so I'm gonna to try to quickly, quickly do this outro. I wanna leave her socials um, on the video and in the description box as well as mine. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any more questions, do feel free to drop us um, in the comment section below or you can add her and myself on our social media and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please do <laughs> and we will see you in another video in the near future i hope yes. <laughs> okay. definitely bye, bye. <laughs>